Hi folks, so if you've been following my soil moisture monitoring series, you know I developed this data logger that monitors air and soil temperature, as well as soil capacitance at various elevations above and below ground. The ultimate goal is to understand how I might improve irrigation timing based on soil and air temperature conditions, and also to quantify the impact of mulch on soil moisture. If you'd like further details on the initial setup, the system has undergone various tests and improvements over the last six months, details of which I've shared in my Soil Monitoring Experiments playlist, which includes links to data and code. I'm fairly happy with the setup, given uninterrupted data has been logging to a camera SD card, all of which has yielded some interesting results as summarized in prior videos. Overall, the instrument is yet another proof of concept for solar-powered data collection independent of plug-in power and telemetry. However, the approach does require that I periodically export data to an Excel spreadsheet for graphing and analysis. There's nothing wrong with this, especially for deployments where telemetry isn't an option, but I wanted to try something a little more user-friendly since my installation is within reach of my own Wi-Fi network. Specifically, I wanted to take advantage of Adafruit I.O., which is a user-friendly Internet of Things platform that can post and host data online for free, and that can be accessed programmatically using the Arduino Programming Software, or IDE. I've played with Adafruit I.O. in the past for logging soil temperature data in support of publications prepared for the University of Arizona's EcoRestore portal. Adafruit I.O. is impressive given that not only is it free, but also offers beautiful graphical outputs that can be easily customized. This is an example of some graphs that were automatically generated from data associated with a prior mulch experiment, requiring no export to spreadsheets or other software for graphing, while also giving me the option to download CSV files of my data for use in other applications like R or Excel. In order to take advantage of Adafruit I.O., I'll have to migrate my wiring and code from a Feather MO ADA logger to this Wi-Fi compatible Feather board hosting an Atwin C1500 to facilitate telemetry over Wi-Fi. Now, I know many of you might be wondering why I didn't go with the ESP32 for telemetry. Well, according to Adafruit, the Atwin C1500 has much lower power usage when properly configured, and I also happen to have one of these on hand thanks to a donation from my local makerspace. I'll be exploring power requirements and configurations in a future video. In addition, I like the fact that the SAM D21 chip will have enough memory and horsepower to run all the libraries associated with the nine sensors driving my setup. Finally, the feather form factor common to both boards suggests I should be able to realize a plug and play approach in regards to replacing the hardware, not accounting for obvious modifications I'll have to make to my code. Now, for those of you just want me to cut to the chase, I have managed to make the transition successfully with live data from all my sensors now reporting out to an Adafruit IO dashboard. I haven't had any issues aside from some power failures associated with a poorly oriented solar panel. The code and dashboard supporting the same are available in the description of this video, but for those of you who want to see more details, this video will summarize the steps I took for the transition to telemetry and IoT data logging. To summarize, these are the major steps required for the same. I'll break each one of these into much smaller steps to help with debugging and repairs should you need the same or decide to replicate this project. To begin with, I'm going to set up the Feather MO Wi-Fi board to work with my network and confirm telemetry by posting some dummy data to Adafruit I.O. But before I realize these tests, I want to ensure compatibility with my existing soil instrument. To do so, I'm going to compare the existing AdaLogger pin mappings to those of the Feather Wi-Fi board to see if anything needs to be modified in my instrument wiring and existing code prior to realizing a plug-and-play drop-in. Let's start with the Feather MO AdaLogger. This slide will summarize how things are currently mapped in my current instrument setup. Pin 9 is used for battery monitoring. Pin 5 is where I have all my Dallas one-wire temperature sensors attached. And I have all my weather sensors, my real-time clock, and my OLED mapped to the SCL and SDA pins. My capacitive sensors are mapped to pins A1 through A3, and I'm keeping pins 22 through 24 open for SPI communications. And finally, 
Pins 4, 7, and 8 are reserved to control and provide LED feedback for the micro SD card on this particular setup. And here are the pins I'll want to have free on the Feather MO Wi-Fi module as required by the Atwin1500C per Adafruit's documentation. Fortunately, none of these conflict with my current setup such that I should be able to simply remove the ADA logger from my instrument and replace it with this Wi-Fi module without having to remap anything in my wiring or code. Next, I configured the Feather MO Wi-Fi board to work with my network and post some dummy data to Adafruit just to test it out. This is fairly easy to do by simply following the well-documented learning guide provided by Adafruit. And I certainly don't want to repeat or replace what Adafruit has already published, but I will share some screenshots and highlights of the major steps associated with following their guide to confirm that if you do the same, things will work out. First, I'll need to make sure that the Arduino Programming Environment, or IDE, will recognize the Feather Wi-Fi board. As explained in the learning guide, I added Adafruit's Board Manager URL so that it's recognized by my Arduino IDE setup. After doing so, I then use the Board Manager option under the IDE's Tool menu to install support for the associated board. I also installed the Arduino Wi-Fi 101 library, which will give me access to the drivers and example code needed to run my new Feather Wi-Fi board. Once that library was installed, I loaded the Check Wi-Fi 101 Firmware Version sketch to my board to check my firmware status. On doing so, I updated this line of code to ensure the pin mappings in code match the hardware wiring for the Feather MO at 1C 1500 Wi-Fi module. Upon loading the modified code, I opened a serial terminal to see what version of the firmware I'm running. In my case, I needed to update the firmware from 19.54 to 19.6.1 as communicated by my serial terminal. Adafruit has an excellent summary on how to update firmware for this hardware, but I'll briefly summarize the steps I took here. First, I opened the firmware update example sketch included with the Wi-Fi 101 library. Again, I made sure that the pin mappings are set properly for my hardware and then uploaded the code. After doing so, I ran this tool available in the Arduino IDE. When prompted, I selected the appropriate port and board for updating the firmware and clicked on the Update Firmware button. Everything worked out okay, but just a heads up that when I tried doing this with version 2.2.1 of the Arduino IDE, I had no luck. For whatever reason, I couldn't get the board to update, but I had no issues with an older version of the IDE, specifically 1.8.19. Next, I'll update the SSL certificate. Using the same firmware updater tool, I added this domain and clicked on Add Domain. Upon doing so, I received confirmation that the certificate had been uploaded to my board. Next, I'll see if the Wi-Fi board is working properly on my network. For this step, I loaded the Wi-Fi web client sketch included with the Wi-Fi 101 library. Again, I updated the Wi-Fi hardware pin mappings as necessary, and then included my network ID and credentials in the Arduino secrets.h or header file. I then uploaded the code and checked my serial terminal for connectivity. Upon doing so, I confirmed that I was able to connect to Adafruit's servers successfully. Next, I'll want to post some dummy data to Adafruit I.O. using Adafruit's sample code. For this, I'll install the Adafruit I.O. library. And I'll also need to set up an account on Adafruit I.O. in order to build my dashboards and data feeds. This also gives me access to a username and key that I'll be required to update in my code for posting data to my own feeds. Once my account was created, I set up a counter feed for hosting and confirming dummy data was in fact being posted by my hardware. I then opened the Adafruit 00 publish sketch included with the Adafruit IO library, making sure to update the config.h file included in this sketch with my own network and Adafruit IO credentials. And if everything has been set up properly, my serial terminal and the Adafruit IO feed will update accordingly. Up to this point, I've confirmed my new hardware can be inserted into my instrument without any rewiring, and the hardware can be programmed to communicate with the Adafruit I.O. platform. Next, 
I'll need to modify my existing instrument sketch by replacing the data logger setup and write functions with new code for posting data to my IoT feeds. For this to work, I set up my feeds on Adafruit IO to accept data, modified my code to post dummy data, and then tested things out to make sure that all my feeds are properly linked to my code. To do this, I studied the example sketch provided by Adafruit for posting an incremental count to a feed as was already successfully tested. Specifically, I took note of the code for setting up the counter feed and then opening the connection to Adafruit I.O. And then I reviewed the syntax for actually posting data to Adafruit I.O. To make this all work, here are the new feeds created in my Adafruit I.O. account to receive the data from all my instrument sensors. Note that if you bring up the Edit option for each feed, you can see how the feed should be referenced in code. The respective code that was tested is called Revised Cap 9, and I kept comments on each iteration to help with those wanting to track the project. In this iteration, I've now set up the appropriate feeds in code. I then commented out all the code associated with reading sensor data and writing values to my SD card, and created a new function for posting dummy data to my Adafruit feeds, which you can review in the provided code. And just for a quick summary, here's the new function that creates the Adafruit I.O. connection, and here's the function that posts dummy counter data to all the new feeds that I just set up in Adafruit I.O. Now, if you look closely at this code, you'll notice a lot of delays between each feed's data post. I take my time in posting data since Adafruit I.O. is rate limited for publishing, so the delays ensure I abide by Adafruit's policies to avoid my account being throttled. This makes no difference to the overall outcome of my data collection. I'll demonstrate those data posts shortly. Suffice it to say that once the data posts are confirmed via my new hardware, it's time to test the board in the field to see if my instrument is within Wi-Fi range for posting real data. If that works out okay, then I can modify the dummy functions in my working code to post real data from my wired sensors and confirm that the posts are valid. Let's focus on this part first. All right, well, it's still raining outside, so I'm going to set this up in a box and uh, leave it outside by the, uh, by the solar monitor. There we go. Okay, it's August 22nd at about 8.30 a.m. And you can see that um, I am getting data on all the feeds. And I'm just going to click on one. So this is the counter. It's recording data over time. It's been doing it all night, so it doesn't look like I'm having any issues uh, with Wi-Fi where that box is installed. Everything looks like it's dry on the inside, which is good. But the bottom line is, is that this location is okay for, uh, for Wi-Fi. Next, I can modify the dummy functions in my working code to post real data from my wired sensors and confirm that the posts are valid. So again, I built on former iterations that work. Um, now I'm dealing with a sketch called revised cap 11, and I added comments to the code revisions so you can follow the changes moving forward. In this iteration, I've reinstated my sensor setup and read functions so that registered data will subsequently be posted to Adafruit IO as opposed to just sharing a counter variable. So over the next couple minutes, I'll show you how that worked out. Okay, it's August 23rd at 1 p.m. and I just replaced the uh, FeatherMO Ada Logger with the Wi-Fi module and updated the code so that real data should be reporting uh, to the IoT site, so. All right, and I'm checking the data here and uh, it does look reasonable. I'm getting numbers that are not one <laughs> from my counter, which suggests that uh, real data is being reported. This is looking pretty promising, so we're just going to leave it alone for a little while now. In future videos, I'll continue improving this setup by doing things like combining NeoPixels with plasma cut templates for communicating soil conditions, and also explore data sonification for listening to soil conditions over time. 
Please consider subscribing if you find this content interesting and or click on the like button to help my channel. Thanks and I'll catch you next time.